All right, good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Liberty Baptist Church for the midweek service. If you can, let's stand. We're going to sing All Hail the Power. it for the same thing tonight we ask for every service we want your power upon the preaching lord your blessing on the service and lord be with each one that has a part in jesus name amen you may be seated all right so guys up up there can you put 512 up there we're we're, we're skipping that song All right, 528, are you able? That's right. Well, let's try, try that again. We'll get it right. going on with that side apparently I don't know if it has more crickets than the rest of the sides or what the deal is I don't know let me tell you a sad story you guys are doing testimonies and come on up 
The last two weeks I've been wanting Kentucky Fried Extra Crispy Chicken. And so, I, I mean, I've been eating churches because they have the special, but Kentucky Fried won't sell you the special anymore. With the, it used to be 10 pieces for like 10 bucks. And so I went by a couple weeks ago and went by and got chicken, and I, I ordered it, and I was all excited. I get, I'm driving home, and they did not ask me what type I wanted. And when I opened it up, it was the original flavor, and I thought, I just paid 11 bucks for four pieces of chicken, and it's not even the crust, because I really don't care about the chicken. I just want the crust. And so, so and then three nights ago, because I'm taking care of Mark till, till 10, 1030 every night. So three nights ago, I, I went by. There's one right there on Old Pearsall Road. I swung in there, and uh, I drove through, and I said, tell me you have the 10-piece for so much money. And they said, we do not. Uh, we had the 10-piece for $21 and something. And I said, I'm not paying. I said, thank you, ma'am. And so I left. And then I went by two nights ago, and uh, they said, we do have it. You just have to, you can get that special. It's 10 pieces or eight pieces for $10. You just have to have the app. Now, those of you that know me, I'm not an app kind of guy. So I pull over, and I said, you can't just sell me the, she said, no, it's, you have to order it through the app. So it's 10.30. They close at 11, and the night before I got there, I pulled in there at, at at 10.46, and they said, we're closed, we, we, we'll open tomorrow. So I'm, this is like my fourth trip to get my Kentucky Fried Extra Crispy Chicken. So I go, I pull to the side, I try to download the app, I can't, it doesn't work with me. Uh, it wants to give me some kind of special with my password. And so then I finally sign in as a guest, and I order my chicken, and it says, sorry, we are closed. I mean, it was like 10, it was 10.50. And so I, I go to the window, and I said, you guys are still open. I tried to order the chicken. Can I get the chicken? She said, yes, sir, you can get the 10 pieces for $21. And so today, Mark and I was driving in, and I, I pulled to the side of the road, downloaded the app, checked in as a guest, ordered my extra crispy chicken, said it'd be ready at 6.46, so that was great. I was going to, I'm coming. I said, tell me you have my chicken. And she says, we're just getting ready to put it down. And I said, it said it'd be ready at 646, at 646. She said, sorry, we're just putting it down. I said, how long is it going to take? And they said, 20 minutes. And I said, she said, I can give you extra crispy white meat, but I don't like white meat. So I got original, so I'd already paid for it with my, with my credit card. So I did get chicken tonight. Again, 10 pieces of original that I do not even like. So it's a sad story when you can't even get a piece of extra crispy Kentucky fried chicken in America. So... It's a sad day. There are a new prayer list on the back table or the back pew by Fifteen, because we want to get over there in plenty of time, and we never know what traffic will be like. So, if you're needing a ride, we will be leaving the church between six and six fifteen. Please get here by that time. If you're just meeting over there, and again, all ages can go. Uh, everyone's welcome to go to the preaching and the games and the stuff that's going on. Uh, and then Saturday, it starts at ten a.m. Uh, and goes till four in the afternoon. So that is this Friday and Saturday. Uh, the Lone Star College guys. Uh, we'll be running the conference over at Texas Baptist. And then Sunday morning, we'll have church in here as usual. Saturday, we'll have bus visitation at 9.30, so one at 10.45. And then um, Sunday morning, Sunday school, and then Sunday morning church. And then the evening, the, the guys from Lone Star Baptist, uh, Lone Star College, uh, will be with us. That's Brother Butler and the guys. Uh, and they'll be here for us on Sunday night singing and preaching. So that's what's going on uh, this week now. Following Tuesday, which is the 4th of July, we'll have a potluck dinner and activities here at the church. Starts at 3 p.m., goes till 9 p.m., so that will be here at the church. Again, bring enough food for you and your family and a little extra. If you have some board games and things like that, want to bring them. I know last time some of the elderly sat in the fellowship hall uh, and played. Some of the folks that wasn't old did too, but sat in the fellowship hall and played games. Uh, and then those others, there was games and stuff outside. So that is on July 4th, which is Tuesday. And then the ladies' brunch is scheduled. It is next month on the 22nd. They're just letting you know ahead of time there's a sign-up sheet in the hallway. Uh, if you can sign up, they'd appreciate that. We have some folks that went, we had a group go to youth conference. We'll start with, uh, AI, I guess you're first. And then Emily and then Sean's going to talk. These are some of the young folks who went to youth conference. going to tell us what happened at youth conference. Um, youth conference was really good. Um, um, we got to hear a lot of good preaching and a lot of good singing. Um, 
Uh, they had a ton of games there. They were super fun. Everyone there was so nice. Um, my favorite preacher was Brother Allen. Um, I got to hear a lot of good preaching, but he was my favorite. His preaching really touched my heart. Um, Youth Conference was a real blessing, and I'm really glad I got to go. The Youth Conference at Emmanuel Baptist Church was a big blessing to me. It was an amazing opportunity to recharge spiritually under amazing preaching, Brother Hayes being my personal favorite. Um, but I'd like to thank Preacher Brother Block and the Pajos for enabling us to go on the trip for the, youth, for the whole youth group. Um, from good preaching to crazy games and other shenanigans, I'd encourage any one of y'all to attend at least once. Uh, the preaching there was really good. It was really a blessing to be able to go. My favorite preacher was Brother Calvin Allen because he brought up some good points in his sermons and also had some pretty funny jokes. Uh, I also remember a sermon that Brother uh, Jordan preached that was really a blessing to me. And over, overall, Youth Conference has really challenged me to serve God better. And I would encourage any of you, if you had the chance uh, to make it, do. And young people and, and parents, we had a, we have a someone one of my one of my old bus kids' um, mom that sends that gives money to the youth fund, and so we was able to take fifty dollars, give each fifty dollars toward each teenager uh, that went to youth conference. So teenagers, I brought the thank you note to remind me to get a thank you note from me. I'll tell you the lady's name; she can write her a thank you note because we appreciate the fact that uh, it, it was a, we were able to have youth conference. When you have a family like the cells do, you when you're paying for four kids, and there was many a time that. I had that and some of the rest you have as well. When you're paying 120 to 150 dollars per kid, it gets to be a pretty expensive week, but we were able to knock 50 dollars off each of the kids and then they did a small fundraiser that helped as well. But we do appreciate all those of you that, that helped get the kids to youth conference and the decisions that they made will be, will, again, you'll get to re receive the blessings from that as well. Oh, if you can, let's stand. This will be the offertory song. Uh, all the way my savior leads me. All the way my Savior leads me, what have I to ask beside? Can I doubt His tender mercy, who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divine is comfort, in my faith in Him to dwell. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to be in church tonight. I pray that you bless this offering, Lord, to exceed the needs of our church. Bless Pastor Nichols and Brother Block. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.
Kurt, won't you come up and give us a brief testimony of about what went on the youth conference? Appreciate the Peugeots and the cells driving. And then uh, again, they went to, for those, most of you know, they went to Longview. There's one that, that goes on in the Dallas Arlington area as well, but this was the one that was in Longview. And so I appreciate Brother Peugeot and Miss Peugeot taking the kiddos. They took the whole family. So he lost his voice the first night. When he called me, he's like, hey, Brother Buck. And I said, I told you to get, stop all that yelling and stuff. But you know him, he had to get yelling for his team. And his team was the yellow team. So, and he begged them, please don't make me yellow because that's what the cowards were. So, but he, their team was still yellow. So. so it was a blessing. We went down there. It was uh, put together really well. Uh, my favorite preacher, uh, actually the, my favorite message was uh, one that Brother Haynes had preached. He talked about the, the three that did not uh, have their hearts stolen. Uh, talking about Absalom, and it was a tremendous blessing. I enjoyed his preaching. He's a missionary to the Navajo Indians. Uh, Brother Allen, he was also a great preacher. Uh, I really enjoyed it. The messages were like right on, right on point. Uh, watching our young people, you know, when they, you know, the invitation time goes down. One of the things that, uh, that really stirs my heart, though, is when I see some of our young people walk down, and uh, I may not be there listening, or, but, but to see them go down, uh, something touched them, they make a decision or whatnot. That's, my, that's one of the biggest blessings that I have. Uh, being able to take my family has been such a blessing. And uh, Brother Gray was a blessing. Uh, they're really, they were really kind over there, really considerate. And they, you know, really laid back. And, but it was really put together really well. I'm glad that the kids were able to go. And that we also had like Emily and Stephen Howard were able to look after, you know, the ladies and the guys. They really helped out, uh, keep them in line. Well... Actually, I don't know, Stephen and Sean, you know, those two, you know, thick as thieves sometimes. I'm like, oh, guys, come on, y'all sleep or else you'll sleep during the service, please. And they did a good job, you know, you know so I'm thankful for y'all. Thank you. Grab your Bibles. You Most of you have the verses as well. But the, the text verse is Judges chapter 3. In Sunday School Sunday, we were talking about a fellow by the name of Shamgar. That's who we're talking about this evening. And again, part of the lesson, I didn't cover, I didn't cover this part on purpose for the teens because I already planned on preaching this tonight. But um, the whole thought behind Shamgar's lesson, the Sunday School lesson, was that Shamgar used what he had. Now again, if you know anything about the story, and we'll read just one verse. This is, again, Shamgar is mentioned in two verses in the whole Bible. Here... And then a little bit later, Deborah talks about him, talks about he ruled at a time when the highways were not safe to travel and folks had to take the by roads, had to go down the little lanes and things because of a bunch of thievery and stuff and a wicked time. But this verse, Judges chapter 3, verse 31, makes this statement. And after him was Shamgar, the son of Anath, which slew the Philistines 600 men with an ox goat. And he also delivered Israel. Now, it says a lot in one verse, two lines even, but says a lot. First, it tells us who he is. Now, again, son of Anath, he may not have even been a, a, a Israelite. Uh, Anath, from what the uh, Google and all those folks think, it actually was talking about his mother, which was not a very good person. Uh, this has to do with some of the false gods and stuff. But again, uh, he became a, a judge of Israel. Uh, in this case, he slew 600 men with an ox goat. Now, for those of you that uh, know that uh, what an ox goad looks like. You, you think of it as a pointed stick, and it was. But it said that some of the ox goad could have been as big as six inches around. So again, it wasn't just a, it wasn't a broom handle, okay? Um, and usually at the end of that ox goad, it was either a sharpened, hardened end, or sometimes they would, they would drive an iron spike through it so that the spike stood out that way. They could use that to goad the ox. And they also used that to, clear, to clean the plow shears when the plow shears got covered with mud and dirt. Um, so again, understand, he had this ox goad. Now, I told the teenagers Sunday, if he killed 600 Philistines, now you say, why did he have an ox goad? Because the Israelites at this time were not allowed to have weapons. Unless they had hidden them, they were not even allowed to have weapons. So the only thing they had was they had their, I mean, their, their equipment that they used on the farm. But again, in his hands, an ox goad was a, was a vicious weapon. I told the teenagers it had to be, one, he was familiar with it. And by the way, sometimes the gun or the weapon or whatever you're familiar with is a lot better than one that you're not. That's why David, when, the, when, when Saul wanted to give him his armor and his weaponry, he said, I haven't proven this stuff. Yeah. It didn't fit, but he also said, I haven't proven it. I don't, I don't, I don't know how this stuff functions. I don't, I'm not used to this. 
But again, I told the, the team Sunday, if Shamgar thought a sword was a better weapon after those first few Philistines he killed and those weapons, those swords laying on the ground, if he wanted to, he could have threw his ox go down and grabbed up a sword. He didn't. You know why? Because he was doing pretty good with an ox goat. I mean, uh, actually, you could say he did really well. I mean, uh, I don't know. I'm sure he got some wounds. I'm sure he got, got some scratches and some cuts and stuff fighting these fellows. But again, if you could picture something, I mean, fairly good size round. Also shows you that he had some muscles. He wasn't some little wimpy fella. I mean, he had some muscles. Because if you fight very long, and if you, you've ever done anything very long, whatever it is, I mean, it, you get tired after a little bit. So, I mean, he was, I mean, and again, I'm sure he did get weary, but he killed 600 fellows with an ox goat. Now, before we pray, I want you to see the other folks there in your, in your notes. 1 Samuel 17, 40 tells us about a young man, and it says, And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook, put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a script, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. By the way, David, again, what he had in his hand was a slingshot, and he killed a giant with it. Next, look at the next one. Judges 15, 15, and 16. And he found a new jawbone of an ass and put forth his hand and took it and slew a thousand men therewith. Samson killed a thousand soldiers, a thousand people with a jawbone of an ass. Notice in John 6, verse 9. There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? Again, what the young man had in his hand was a sack lunch. A sack lunch that mom made. Again, it wasn't a lunch that she had made for the family. It wasn't a lunch that she had made for, uh, for a crowd. It was a lunch that she made for him. But again, as you know the story very well, you know that Jesus took that sack lunch and blessed it and break it. And at the end, there was, they, had more to, they had more at the end than they started with, which is a, a crazy thing. They fed thousands of people. Then at the end, they had more left over than they even started with. You try that sometime. Now, I can tell you it'll work if you tithe. If you give faithfully to God, you'll find that sometimes you'll end up with more at the end than you started with. God blesses you. But again, we're looking at people that, again, use whatever, what they had in their hand, what they had. Notice then also Exodus chapter 4, verse 2. And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thine hand? And he said, A rod. If you know your story very well, you know that Moses, that rod, uh, became a snake. And again, some, uh, but again, that rod was a very powerful thing, and God used it several times through Moses' life. So my question to you tonight is, what have you got? that you can use for the Lord. Now, the Lord doesn't ask you to do something that you're not capable of. He never, he never leads you someplace that He won't provide for you. He never asks you to do a task that you can't do. Now, you may not think you're able to do it, but God knows you better than you know yourself. And again, God will sometimes... I joke with someone about this. Several months ago, someone came to me and said, Brother Block, you need to get up there and rip it. Like, I mean, get up there and preach like Brother Nichols. And I said, I can't. And they said, why not? I said, I'm not Brother Nichols. I said, I'm not, I can't, I said, if I tried to be Brother Nichols, I would be a poor imitation. I said, but you know there's someone I can be? I can be Brother Block. And uh, now that, that may not be a good thing, but that's, that's who I can be. Uh, now, Christine's good at imitating people. Christine can imitate different, I mean, different things, but I'm not good at imitating, all right? Uh, so for me to try to be Brother Nichols, I would fail at that. But again, uh, that's what we want to look at tonight is use what you have to serve God. Let's pray and then we'll get into the lesson. Lord, I ask you to help me. Pray, Lord, you'd help the lesson to make sense, to be helpful and useful. And that, Lord, that if there's one here, especially tonight without Christ, that they'd get saved this evening. And the rest of us, Lord, I pray you'd help us to be moved to serve you. If we're already serving you, serve you, serve you harder, serve you better than we are, and serve you more faithfully. And I pray, Lord, if there's someone here that's not serving you tonight, that they'd be, be, be motivated to serve you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to give you five simple truths. Watch in your hand. Again, what, serve God with what you have. Notice in your, in your notes you have Deuteronomy 10, verse 12. I'm going to read the whole verse, but when I get to some of these, I'm just going to read the thought. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require thee, but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all of his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God. Now, notice the phrase, with all thy heart. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 13. Notice in the middle, and to serve him with all your heart. Jo uh, Joshua chapter 2, verse, or 22, verse 5 says, at the very end down there, and to serve, to serve him with all your heart. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 24 says, Only the, fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. In the New, you say that's all Old Testament. It is. Notice the New Testament, Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. Jesus said unto, the, unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. Chapter 12, verse 30 of Mark has the same statement, and again says, With all thy heart. Now, 
There are many times when I was a kid that my dad would make this reference. He would say, you need to put your heart into it. And he wasn't really meaning I should reach in physically and pull up my heart and put my heart to use my heart. That was not what he was meaning. But what he was meaning is I need to I need to do I need to try harder. I need to give it all I've got. If you notice any of those verses, it said typically this, all your heart and all your soul. And some of them said all your mind. I mean, what are you simply saying is everything within you with all you got. Now, I used to tell the guys playing sports when they was on my team. I, I always told him this, at the end of the game, if you gave me everything you got, then I'm happy with you. And I said, don't step out on the floor unless you're willing to give me everything you have. Now, not everybody was equal. The Sanders son, Blaine, I mean, he was probably one of the best players I ever coached and one of the most coachable players. That's not always true of good players. Sometimes a good player is a jerk, but Blaine was not. Uh, I've coached a lot of guys through the years, and I had, we had some really good ball players and some really good guys. Um, and I'm not one of those coaches that sits on the bench and never says anything. I'm one of those coaches that can't sit down. I don't sit down during the whole game. Um, they finally started making boundaries up in, 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 in the last several years where the coach can only go so far this way and so far that way. They, they limit you of running up and down the, the thing. Uh, but I'm one of those coaches that can't sit down. I coach on my feet. With my mouth running all the time. You say, that's a surprise with a block because your mouth never runs. It does when I'm playing, when I'm coaching sports. But the truth is, I never expected the, 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 the players to give me something they didn't have. I wanted them to give me everything that they did have. I didn't expect miracles of them. For instance, if, if it came down to a technical foul and we could choose anyone to shoot a free throw, I chose my best free throw shooter. Now, my best free throw shooter might miss it. But I didn't say, you know what, this is a good time to practice your free throws. Hey, come here. I didn't choose a guy that shoots 20% and, and say, you know what, this is a good time. This, this will give you some practice. There's a lot of pressure. You get one shot, this could win or lose the game. Go make this one. I mean, I didn't do that. Say, who'd you use to put on there? I put on there the fellow that, that made, we had guys that shot 75, 80, 85% free throws. Say, how'd they do that? One of the rules that I had was they had to shoot, I don't remember now, but I think it was 25 layups every day and 25 free throws every day. Say, what well, if they didn't have a basketball rim? I didn't care. They found a basketball rim. If they, you say, what well, if they didn't do that? Then at, at practice, they got to run for a while because I expected them to shoot 25 layups and 25 free throws every day. I wanted them to shoot the free throws. with their, I wanted them to be able to do it with their eyes closed so they just could do it without thinking because, again, that way when the pressure's on, they, they, can, they can just do it because they've, they've practiced that so long. Again, use your heart to serve the Lord. That's what he said. He said, I want you to give me all thy heart. He said, all thy heart, all your heart, all your heart. Uh, again, he said, again, that in the Old Testament and the New Testament, to, to serve him with all your heart. Now, listen to me. There are a lot of Christians that don't have their heart in church work. Now, you have it in fishing. You have it in hunting. You have it in shopping. You have it in, in other stuff. You have, might have it in cooking. You might have it in something. But, again, there are Christians that, that serve the Lord half-heartedly. What I mean is, I mean, you do it because you're supposed to, but you don't, I mean, you, you really aren't doing it. You say, how can you tell? You can tell by the expression on your face. Because see, someone that's doing it because they, I mean, and giving it all they got, I mean, you can see the determination and also see they're enjoying it. By the way, if you give it all you have at the end of the day, uh, you'll, you'll hear God say to you, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Because that's all he wants from you is your all. One of Brother Perry's favorite songs is to get, uh, what is it, Brother Perry? His best. I have to tell Brother Perry his own favorite. You told me one time it was your favorite. Is that the name? Our best or his best? Our best. Our best. Um, we were singing it one time. Brother Perry said, that's my favorite. So when we get older, we forget our favorites. But I remember Brother Perry's favorite, and it was our best. Now listen to me. I think that's one of God's favorites as well, because that's what he wants from us. He wants our best. We want to make sure that we serve him with all of our heart. The second thing I want you to realize tonight, and the second thing, again, I want you to use with, I mean, what you have to serve the Lord is with your health. Use your health to serve God. Now, you know what's so amazing to me? So many young people serve themselves and the devil when they're young. Then when they get older and they've slowed down and they don't have all that energy that they used to have, then they decide that they'll serve the Lord. Now, do I want you to serve the Lord in your 40s and 50s and 60s? Yes, I do. But I also want you to serve the Lord in your 20s and 30s as well, or in your teens as well. When you got all that energy, when you got all that excitement, when you got all that, I mean, all that get up and go, again, serve him with that. It's amazing to me also that unhealthy people, sometimes we had to make, how many of you remember Brother Hampton? 
Sometimes we had to make Brother Hampton not do stuff. Because if Brother Hampton got out and did stuff, guess what Brother Hampton did? He passed out. I mean, he'd be walking and boom, I mean, he passed out. He just fell down, I mean, and usually banged himself up. Now, he, I think, I don't remember if it was a stroke or a car accident, what it was, but I mean, he, was, he had a lot of the same issues that, that, that uh, our brother Howard has, but I mean, he had one side that was, that, was, that was rigid, and he limped and had some issues walking. But listen to me, he loved to go so winning. He loved to go pass. He wanted to pass out tracks of Fiesta. I mean, and, and by the way, Trini Molina, yeah. who weighed probably 60 pounds, I mean, and that's with, I mean, with heavy clothes on, I mean... Uh, had two fake artificial legs, I mean, and, and was hunched over and had a hard time breathing. He loved to go sewing and knocking doors and doing stuff. It amazes me that people who are not healthy are willing sometimes more to serve the Lord than those who are healthy. Shame on us who are healthy if we're not serving the Lord. Use your health to serve the Lord. By the way, the reason you have your health is because God's good. You could be sick. There are people with, in their 20s and 30s that have cancer or have some hideous, I mean, have some, some real, really, de- uh, I mean, a de- 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 debilitating sicknesses and illnesses. I was like Biden. He couldn't say concentrate today. But he said consecrate. I guess he was thinking religiously. But uh, uh, notice in your Bibles, I don't, I don't have this in your notes, but Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, makes this statement. Hebrews 12, 1. Wherefore, seeing we also can pass about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, and the sin which thus so easily beset us, and let us run with patience to the race that is set before us. Now, notice what he said, to get rid of the weight. I don't know that he was necessarily meaning this, although this can slow us down. I don't know if you've noticed those of us who have this. It does slow us down. It makes us what we cannot do. But again, what he meant was things, usually when they were talking about weights, they were talking about things that are not a sin, but things that can be a hindrance. There are a lot of things that you and I can get into that are not, they're not specified in the Bible as a sin. But if they, for instance, hunting's not specified as a sin. Hunting doesn't have to be a sin, but can hunting be a sin? Yes, it can. So can fishing and a bunch of other stuff. If you put anything before the Lord, not only are you putting them or whatever it is, whoever it is you're putting before the Lord, you're putting them in danger. You're also, by the way, you're, 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 you're disobeying God because he says that he wants all of our heart and all of our soul and all of our might. He wants everything we got. Again, notice in your Bibles there, Romans chapter 12, verses, where, again, when we talk about serving God with all of our health. Notice he says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So he says, I want you to be a living sacrifice. And listen to me, he says, I want you to be holy. Now, I don't know about you, holy is hard for me. It is. Holy is hard, and, if, and by the way, probably hard for all of you as well. You know why? Because I'm a sinner. And I don't always want to do right. I don't always want to, I, I, don't, I mean, I don't always want to serve the Lord. I don't always want to do what I'm supposed to do. I have that inclination. I mean, I'm leaning the other way. Now, he said, I want you, and he told us, he said, listen, that's just your reason. I mean, that's the least that you can do for the Lord. That's what he said. That's just your reasonable service. If you think you're going above and beyond the call of duty, like they give out rewards for the military for going above and beyond the call of duty, if you're serving the Lord today, you're not going above and beyond the call of duty. You're just doing your reasonable service. I mean, you're just a regular grunt. You're nothing, nothing special. I'm nothing special. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Notice Romans chapter, chapter 6, verse 13. Neither yield you your, instrument, your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. So he said, don't let these body parts be used for the devil. But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. He said, I want you to use these hands and these feet and this mind and these eyes and these ears. Use those instruments not for unrighteousness, but for righteousness. Again, it is not easy to do. It means you did it on purpose. Okay, it was something you did. I mean, again, you did it on purpose. Notice, again, he says about the same thing, Romans chapter 6, verse 19. I speak after the manner of men because of the inf- infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to in- iniquity, unto in- iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. He said, you've yielded them in the past. Now, I, I've never smoked a cigarette, but some of you use these, used to. These two fingers, they were pretty, pretty occupied. They had a cigarette in them most of the time. Some of you, you had your hands wrapped around, and it wasn't a root beer. I mean, there was, it, there was, your, hands were, your fingers were wrapped around something. Uh, and again, what he says is you've used those members 
for these feet took you to places you weren't supposed to go. Most of us, our feet have taken us places we shouldn't go. He said, you know what? You use them in the past. They were used for iniquity. I want you to use them for righteousness unto holiness. He said again, he wants us to use our health, use our body to serve God. Notice what he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and 6, chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? Again, he, he poses that. You didn't realize that? And it goes on and says, For you're bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. So in your flesh, and by the way, even in your attitude, in your spirit, he said, because they belong to God. Now, he refers to our body as a temple. He does. Now, a temple, a temple is a place of worship, a place of reverence, a place of, I mean, again, godly, typically of godly service. So he says this body should be a place of, of, of worship, a place of godly service. Again, use your health. I said use your heart to serve God. Use your health to serve God. Number three, notice Proverbs chapter three. You should use your money. To serve God. Now, some of you went, ah, I don't have none. And so, um, and that may be true, especially if you have a bunch of kids. I can tell you, most of us older folks now who our kids are grown and gone, we still may not have a lot of money, but we have more than we did when the kids were home. Because the kids, when the kids are home, they always need another pair of shoes, or they always need some more clothes, or they always need, I mean, someone's always needing a haircut. That's why many parents cut their own kids' hair. First time I ever went to a barbershop was when I was in Bible college. Up to then, my dad had cut my hair, all, or my mom, all the way through growing up. She said, did you get a choice about how, how your hair was cut? I did not. A couple of times, dad smarted off and said, how do you want it? I started to ask, and then he just laughed and said, I'm just messing with you. I mean, he didn't care. You don't have to be a good barber when you just cut it all off, okay? I mean, you really don't have to be that good. Now, Mom was a little bit better. I mean, she actually tried to, to I mean, to, to make us happy. Dad didn't care. He just cut it off. But again, uh, use your money to serve God. Now, listen to me. You might have, there are some of you today that, I mean, today is a crazy. Sean told me the other day, he said, he said, Block, I think I'm going to have to turn down that job for $26 an hour. And I went, what? A job that starts at $26 an hour? Can you imagine, as, as adults, I mean, $26,000, that's, that's over $1,000 a week. That's $52,000 a year. I mean, some of us, you know what, when we, when we think of $52,000, we think vacation. I mean, for the first time in our lives. I mean, a young person, an 18-year-old kid that starts at $26 now, that is crazy. I'm amazed when I see the signs at Taco Bell and McDonald's that you can start at $12 and $13 and $14 an hour. Now, I've never worked at those places because I worked for a farmer, but some of you did. You, your, your first job was at fast food. How many of you ever worked at a fast food restaurant? A few of you did. Now, again, that's usually where you, a lot of times where a teenager starts. And they usually start at minimum wage, okay? That's usually where they start at fast food, minimum wage. They don't, they're not starting at minimum wage today. You know why? Because they can't find anybody to work. Nobody wants to work today, so they're often, they have to offer more and more money. But again, if you have money, and by the way, you young people that don't have, I mean, you're not married and having kids, you might, usually you have money when you're young before you get married if you're working, and then in, in those first few years of married and kids and all the bills, you don't, and then when you get older, you do. Uh, but again, if you have any money, you ought to use it for the Lord. Notice what Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10 says, Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So you ought to always tithe. He goes on and says, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty. Now notice he said, you give to me and I'll fill, I mean, your barns will be full. Now you would think if you give, that again, this is one of those things that doesn't make sense physically. It doesn't make sense that if you give, you will get. Typically if we give, we, we, we have less. Okay, I started with 10, I gave 5 to the church, now I have 5. We would think that, I mean, I don't know, you don't have to be great at math to realize 5 is less than 10. But he says, you know what, you give... You give the first fruits and you give of all, all of your substance and your barns will be full. Amen. Now what that means is he will bless what you have and it will, it will, it will be bigger than, I mean, again, that five will, will buy more than five normally will buy. That five, and by the way, sometimes he will give you, uh, I've had times, I remember years ago, uh, I, I don't know if Brother Nichols was there at the time, but one time at Christmas time, Brother Vineyard asked all of us to pray about giving a whole paycheck as a Christmas present to Jesus. What, re what Brother Vineyard really meant would probably was a Christmas present to Brother Vineyard at Windsor Hills Baptist Church. But, but uh, uh, he asked us to give a whole paycheck. Now, when you're in Bible college, 
you, you, you've got a school bill, a full-time school bill. And then, in, the, in this case, I was married. I mean, you have, you have a, a wife and kids, possibly, um, and a car and rent. Uh, to give a whole paycheck, that's a big deal, especially because it's Christmas time. And I'd already, with that, now, it was a fi- one of those five-week paychecks, so I was going to get an extra paycheck. I'd already spent that extra paycheck. That was going to buy some Christmas. That was going to take us back to see our, our moms and dads in Kansas and Missouri. That was, going to give us, that, was, that was going to give us our Christmas. So I started praying. Now, my paycheck back then, I think, was $200-something dollars a month. It wasn't big, but, but I started praying. First, I told God, how about 50? And I'm negotiating with God. Listen, God's a hard negotiator, okay? I said 50. He didn't go, oh, good, great, yay. He just didn't say anything at all. So then I said, okay, how about, how about 100? And God's still quiet. I said, how about 150? And God's still, because I'm just thinking, even with 75, I can still buy gas, because back then gas was much cheaper. I can still, I mean, I'm still, I'm still figuring I can give part of it, and I can still have enough. I'm still trying to juggle this here. I'm good with math. Then I finally said, I right, find God, I'll give it all to you. Amen. And then he said, thank you. That's what I wanted in the first place. It took you a while to get there, but you finally got there. So I gave my whole paycheck. Now, I can tell you, I figured it back later. We had people that walked up that normally wouldn't do that. We had someone walk up to us. They said, I hear you're going back home for Christmas. I just want to give you something to help with gas money. Gave us some money. I went to, I went to a yard sale. I was needing some clothes. And that was one of the things that I was going to do. I didn't have hardly any pants. I went to a yard sale. And some of you remember that the brand Hanes. That used to be a big Pant, pant brand, I don't know if it is anymore. I think, that was, I think that's what it was. But I went to a yard sale and had, had a whole bunch of uh, pants my size for 25 cents a piece. And I got like 10 pairs of pants. Now, I, someone, when someone told me later, you realize those are like 20 or $25 a piece? And I went, no, nah, I do not because I've never bought any pants that cost 20 or $25. So, but when I added up later, I got three times my investment. The money people gave us and the other things that work out. And so listen to me. It doesn't make any sense, but I gave to God, and God gave back to me more than I gave to God. Again, he says, I want you to use your money for the Lord. Realize, by the way, your money says in the first place. You wouldn't even have it if it wasn't for the Lord in the first place. Uh, Notice in your Bible, Matthew chapter 6. Now, in this case, realize money on this earth, by the way, can be pretty, some people think it's really valuable, but it can also be a hindrance. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. Where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and steal. He said, There's an investment you can make that you cannot lose. Now, most investments can be lost. The stock market can go up, but the stock market can also go down. And listen to me, you can have a bunch one day and have have a lot less the next day. And you, it wasn't that you even made a bad investment. It's just because sometimes the knucklehead politicians play some crazy stuff uh, with, with the economy. Notice verse 21. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Now that's the, that's the issue. What he says is, I want you, just to, I want you to give of your money to, to me, to serve me with it. Now, by the way, if you can do that, that means your heart is with God. Because, again, where your money goes, that's where your, where your heart's at. He goes on and says, But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will hold to the one and despise the other. And he sums it all up. You cannot serve God and mammon. Make sure you're not in love with your money. Say, how do I do that? Tithe in the first place. Give to missions in the second place. Give to the others offerings as well. And be a blessing to others. And by the way, use your money for the Lord. Again, you say... Uh, what can, listen to me, there are some folks that give money, they tithe, then they give money to the bus ministry. That is a wise ministry to give your money to. Now, there are a lot of places you can put your money that's not going to be a good investment. The bus ministry is a good investment. That lady, again, that lady that gives the money for the teens, she doesn't realize it. There are some teenagers that, that they may be in the full-time ministry in the future because of a decision they made at youth conference. That's what happened to me. I made a decision as a 12-year-old boy at First Baptist Church Hammond. I surrendered my heart to the Lord. And from that point on, I knew I, I, I was supposed to, I didn't know what God wanted me to do, but I knew he wanted me in full-time Christian service. I did that as a 12-year-old boy. Many young people, many adults in here today, you surrendered as a young person to serve the Lord. And here you are still serving the Lord. Again, kids are a good investment when it comes to money. Church is a great investment when it comes to money. Different ministries are great investment. But again, use your money to serve the Lord. Number four, and I'm going to hurry on, use your family to serve God. 
God says of Abraham in Genesis chapter 18, verse 19, For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord. He said, you know, I know Abraham, his family, him and his family are going to serve God. Joshua himself said in Joshua 24, 15, If it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But here's what he said about him and his family, But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now listen to me, a man that says that who doesn't have a wife back in him will be a house that's not serving the Lord. By the way, wives, when your husband decides to serve the Lord, you make that decision too. We're going to serve the Lord. It's not he's going to serve the Lord. And by the way, a husband who has to drag a wife to serve the Lord is a husband that won't accomplish very much. I'm so thankful. Mr. Block never helped me. Mr. Block knew I was, I, I was surrendered to full-time Christian ministry. My wife knew I was going to, she didn't know what I was going to be. And by the way, she, she decided I'm just going to be your wife. If God led me to the mission field, guess what she'd have been? She'd have been the wife of a missionary. If God led me into evangelism, because when, when I went to Bible college, I did not know what he wanted me to do. I didn't. I just knew he wanted me to be in the ministry. If, if he called me uh, uh, to be an evangelist, my wife would have been an evangelist's wife. Because she had just decided, I'm just going to be your wife, and whatever you serve the Lord, I'm going to serve the Lord right, right beside you. And again, I can tell you, it's much easier to serve the Lord when husbands and wives are on the same page. When husbands and wives are pulling in the same direction. And it's nice when the kids get on board as well. Uh, think about Noah. And that's what most of the rest of your verses end up. It's in... Genesis chapter 6, we all know that Noah built an ark. When you read the dimensions of that ark, it was a monstrous boat. It wasn't just, I mean, he didn't build a canoe. I mean, he built a, I mean, it's like an apartment complex. I mean, he built, it was big. Back in a day where they didn't have cranes and forklifts and bulldozers and stuff. Now, listen to me. It was Noah and his wife and his three sons and their wives. Could you imagine if Noah didn't have his sons? If his family didn't serve the Lord, it would have been Noah and his wife. Now, if it took, took the eight of them 120 years to build the ark, they might still work, be working on it today. I mean, then there may have never been a flood. We might all be, we might all be going by and say, hey, is that crazy Noah? I mean, it took him 120 years with eight of them. I don't know what it would have been like. If, I mean, if Noah, you say, would he have done it? He'd have, he'd have worked at it. I don't know how long it would have taken him. If you're wondering whether if the whole family serves the Lord, if it makes it easier and, you, and accomplishes more, it does. And I can tell you, when the eight of them stood back and looked at that thing, they went, wow, we, we did that. When those animals were marching, going in, the dinosaurs, and there were dinosaurs on the ark, and I mean, down to the littlest of animals, when they all got in there and got into their compartments, and by the way, and had all the stuff, I mean, had rooms big enough for them. I mean, again... Noah and his sons did that. His whole family served the Lord. It is a blessing when not only the husband and the wife, but also when the kids. And kids, listen to me. You want to break mom and dad's heart? Go away from the Lord. That will break mom and dad's heart. You want to take some of the steam out of mom and dad's cells? I mean, some of the wind out of their cells? Go to live for yourself. Serve the devil. I mean, mess up. I mean, sometimes, by the way, the devil doesn't beat up. I mean, he doesn't, he's not victorious by beating up dad and mom. They, they fight him off, but the devil wins by getting to the kids, and then that breaks mom and dad's heart. It is a, it'd be a blessing, young people, if you decide right alongside your mom and dad. If your mom and dad didn't have to make you go to church, if you came to church because you want to come to church, and if someday they're, they're a little tired and they're really wore out, and they say, I don't know if we're going to go tonight. And you say, can we please go to church? And if they say no, then throw out this card because this wins almost every time. Can I call someone else to come pick me up? No, get dressed. We're all going to go to church. I mean, because, see, they don't want you to call someone. You say, how do you know that? Because I did that to my parents at the time. And that, that's not a wise, necessarily a wise thing to do. But the time I said, can I call so-and-so? And they said, no. I said, can I walk? And they said, No. Uh, and then they said, fine, get dressed. You really want to go to church? Get dressed. We'll go to church. So that night, my mom and dad, who was tired and didn't want to, and again, farmers work hard, didn't want to go to church. I mean, was running late, uh, went to church. But again, it'd be nice, kids, if mom and dad didn't have to drag you along when they're going to church Amen. in the service of God, the whole family. And the last thing, and I'll be done, not only should you use your, your heart to serve God, not only should you use your health to serve God, not only should you use your money to serve God and your family to serve God, Use all your possessions to serve God. 
Now, the New Testament church did something in Acts chapter 2. Notice Acts chapter 2. You don't have it in your, in your stuff because I didn't want to have to waste the page to run a couple of verses that you could just turn to Acts and read them right alongside of it. But notice Acts chapter 2, verse 44. And all that believed were together and, all had, and had all things common. Verse 45. And sold the possessions and goods and parted them to all men and every man had as, as every man had need. Notice chapter 4, verse 34. Neither were there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of things that were sold and laid them at the apostles' feet. Distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. Now it goes on and tells you about others. And then in chapter 5 you find out that there's somebody that sold their stuff. You know the story of Ananias and Sapphira, but they wanted the recognition of giving it all without actually giving it all. Now it mentions that she was privy to it. Ladies, be careful. And I've seen this happen a lot through the years. Ladies, for some reason, the devil can sometimes make it where you want stuff. You'd like to have, you'd like to have the name brand clothes or the nicer dresses or the nice hairstyle or have your nails manicured. And there's nothing wrong with all that stuff. If you can afford it, knock yourself out. If you have to save for it like some people do and it's on a special occasion that you go to get your nails done or your feet done. Uh, someone asked me one time, you ever had your feet done? I had not. Till Tatiana on our senior trip one time did it. And I can tell you, it feels pretty good to put your feet in that warm water and have the little lady massage your feet and then clip your toenails and make them look all pretty because mine don't look all pretty by themselves. I mean, it took a lot of work. It was pull out the chainsaw and the file. I mean, it was, I mean, but when I got through, it's like, wow, I can wear sandals now. I mean, you know, I have pretty feet. I mean, but the, the truth is that the New Testament church, what it really said was they were just all in, okay, when the church needed something. In this case, some of the folks sold stuff. Now, I've never been to a camp meeting. I know some of you have. At camp meeting time, sometimes folks put stuff in the offering. I mean, when I say they put stuff in the offering, they might put the whole billfold in the offering. They might pull off their wedding rings and put them in the offering. I'm not sure how the wife or the husband looks at that when, when you, when, at the end of the service, but, but the truth is sometimes at those camp meetings, I mean, there's folks that I mean, make some, some crazy commitments. I mean, some wild commitments. What they're saying is, I, I'm all in. I mean, I'm, I'm on board. Now, listen to me. When I say that your possessions, you ought to use your possessions to serve the Lord. Some of you have, for instance, some of you have been out to the Prairie's house and the Prairie's property. For many, many years, we went out there for the 4th of July picnic. And wasn't that nice? Now, listen to me. We couldn't have done that when they lived on Gallup, okay? It had been pretty full if we all got to their place when they was on Gallup. How many of you remember when they lived on Gallup? And we couldn't all went to Gallup. But man, they live out on that nice property with all the pecan trees and the golf carts and the mean dog. I mean, they, I mean, they have some nice stuff on the property. Some of you went out and you fished at Brother Block's Pond when it had fish, I mean, when it had water. Uh, you say, why did you do that? I did that because kids like to fish. And I had a pond with fish in it. And I put the fish in there for that reason, so people could fish. Say, so you ever fish in your pond? Hardly ever. I fished when, when someone wanted to go fishing. I like to hunt, but I've enjoyed really in the last several years we've had, I probably had 12, Kurt and I've had probably 12 or 15 people, many of them teenagers, some of them adults that never killed a deer. They came out and killed their first deer on our property. You say, what was you doing? Trying to use our property, our possessions for the Lord to be a blessing to others. Now, I don't know, you might, it might be something that you, I mean, your sewing machine might be what God uses. Okay? I mean, it might be, it might be your knowledge of a computer. It might be you know something about phones and you could help someone with their app after church. You have, not, I mean, you, you, have, you have something that you, can, that you can use, something that you can use to be a blessing. There are folks, by the way, that, that uh, I mean, Brother Mike, is, he has a weed eater. You say, does he don't have a lawnmower? If he has, he doesn't use it. He uses a weed eater. All that area up front, he weed eats at. All this area back, he weed eats at. I asked him one time, don't you have a lawnmower? And he's like, yeah, I mean, he likes his weed eater. He's in love with that weed eater. You, again, I don't know what you have, but I guarantee you have something. If you gave it to the Lord, God would use it. That's what they did in the New Testament. They gave what, I mean, they gave what they had. I mean, some folks were cooks, so they, I mean, they cooked the food. I've heard folks, I've heard Brother, Brother Sells talk about when they, when they, when they go to uh, Mardi Gras, they have a lady that cooked for them for years. I mean, cooked good food for them. I mean, big meals. So they'd come back after passing out tracks all day long, all wore out. And she'd have a great big, I mean, a monster meal. And he said she didn't, make, she didn't make a lot of money. She wasn't a rich lady. She saved all year, pinched her pennies all year, and saved so that she could cook for the folks that came, to the, came down to pass out tracks at Mardi Gras. I don't know what you have, but I guarantee you, all of us have something 
that we can use for the Lord, that, that God can get some, some, some glory out of. Now, you can either hoard it and hang on to it for yourself, and I can tell you, I have a lot more fun watching someone else pull in a fish than for me to pull it in. I can pull it in. I mean, I pulled in hundreds of fish. They don't carry all that big a thrill anymore. Now, if I got to go on Wicked Tuna, that would bring a thrill to me, okay? If I could pull in one of those, you know, eight-foot tunas in there worth $6,000, that would be fun. But the truth is, the New Testament church sold properties, they gave stuff, but what it was is, I mean, they just wanted the church to just, they was going out day, I mean, they weren't waiting for Sunday, they were going out every day getting people saved. They, when they got excited, they all got excited, and they stayed excited for quite a while, and a bunch of people got saved. What it said was, daily, they got saved and added to the church. They, they didn't want to just wait till Saturday bus visitation, they didn't want to wait till Thursday night. I mean, they said, hey, can we go out Monday? Oh, yeah. How about, can, I can't make it Monday, but can, can we do it Tuesday? Oh, yeah. I mean, they just got excited about serving the Lord, and that's what they did. And they financed it. I mean, the church wasn't rich, but the, and, the, and by the way, I don't think the folks were rich, but they took what they had, and they gave it, and they used it, and God blessed it. Again, whatever you have tonight in your hand, my question is, uh, who's, who is it serving? Is it serving you? There are people in this room that have great talent and ability, and we don't even know about it because you've never let anyone know. You're sitting on it. I mean, you got something you could do for the Lord. You got something that you got a way that you'd be a blessing around the church. See, we have electricians that are blessings because when we have electrical problems, they fix it. We have guys. I mean, like Brother Perry and Brother Price. When we have stuff that needs fixed, I mean, they know they either have they either have, I mean, the knowledge themselves to fix it, or they have guys that have the knowledge to fix it. And so they, I mean, when the air conditioner breaks down, they fix it. It is a blessing when someone does that. It's a blessing when done, when someone does it for free. To this, we've never asked Brother Joe or to, to, to do the electrical stuff for free. He, I mean, again, we've offered to, we have offered to pay him. We offer to pay many of you that have done stuff around the church. And by the way, if, 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 if you need us to buy the parts, and that's what we've done sometimes, more, more than glad to do so. But I can tell you this, if you just give what you got to the Lord, your heart, your mind, your body, your arms, your feet, your finances, your family, your health, you give that to the Lord. You'll find blessings there and some happiness there. If you say, Brother Block, I'm, I'm looking, I, I'm, I'm trying to find the meaning of life. Serve the Lord. Amen. He said we were made for a purpose. You know what it was? To glorify Him. That's why we were made. If, you're wondering, if, you're trying, if you've been looking for the answer, that's the answer tonight. Glorify Him. And if what you're doing is glorifying Him, keep it up. If what you're doing is not glorifying Him, stop it and find something that glorifies Him. Father, we love you. Ask the Lord to help us tonight that we might... Use what you gave us. Lord, there are some things I can't do. I don't have every talent and ability. There's some things I'm not capable of. There's some things that I'm not any good at. But Lord, there are some things that I can do.